What do I want? I want to be able to compare my walking algorithm for a human robot against your algorithm. I want to be able to compare my navigation algorithm of a wheel robot against your algorithm. I want to be able to compare my grasping algorithm against your algorithm. Basically, what I'm talking about is about measuring how good or bad is a solution, or an algorithm solution, for a given robotics problem. And for this, at the construct, we propose a way of benchmarking robotics algorithms. Our proposal has to be ROS-based, it has to be based on simulations, and it has to be based on the cloud. So your question probably is, why ROS? Well, you know because you are here. So ROS is becoming the standard in the robotics industry. It also has a very huge community, and it has a very well-developed um, interface between algorithms and hardware. Answer this question, the next one is, why simulations? Because simulations, they provide the exact same environment to everyone. You can create different testing environments for the same problem very easily. You can repeat those tests with the exact conditions every time. You can run it on real time, uh, faster than real time, and you can rerun the test automatically if something changes. For example, let's say uh, you are using MoveIt and then MoveIt changes, you can rerun the whole bunch of tests against, uh, again against the new version of MoveIt and get a new score. Third question is why the cloud? Because having put a common, ROS, uh, a common interface to algorithms and robots, having put a common setup environment, we are putting a common way of interacting with that environment using a standard web platform that you don't need to install anything, you can access from anywhere and use the powerful computers of the, of the cloud. And also, again, it allows you to very easily rerun tests automatically. So how this, would, this benchmark system work? Let's make an example. For example, let's make an example of a grasping algorithm for mobile manipulation, manipulators. So the first thing that we have to do is to identify the interface that we require for our algorithm in order to work. This is, we need to access the depth sensor, the camera, the arm gripper, and the mobile base, uh, base wheels, for example. The next thing is to define a set of robots that apply to this interface. In this case, we have selected three different robots, one from Robotnik, another one from Fetch, and another one from PAL. Great, next step. Let's define the set of environments that apply to this problem. Three different environments where this algorithm has to work with those robots. Next step is to test your algorithm on the first robot on each one of the environments and obtain a score. So if we test the Robotnik um, robot with the first environment, we obtain this score for the problem that we try to solve. With the second environment, we obtain this second score and with the third environment, we obtain this third score. We repeat the same problem, the same thing, the same path with fetch robot, with all the environments, different scores, and also with PAL robotics uh, robot. Finally, when we have ended um, testing the three robots in the three environments, we get something like that, it's a graphic, displaying all the scores that we have obtained for each one of the uh, robots and the environment. This is not real results, so please don't get any, uh, any ideas about who is best or whatever. Sorry. So, uh, 
final score for the algorithm will be a kind of average of the scores. So this is still not decided. For now, we can do an average of the robot in all the environments. And that score will be the score of your algorithm for grasping with this kind of manipulators. So if we repeat this with different algorithms, we can have a method of comparing different grasping algorithms. Okay, what do we need to implement this system into a real thing, not just a theoretical one? Well, the first thing that we need is an ontology of problems that we want to compare, of robotics problems. This was an example about grasping, but we can do another one for navigation, for walking, for whatever you think about. We have to have also a list of robots that uh, we need to use for the test and for each one of the problems of the ontology. A list of environments and then a web platform that handles it all. For the ontology, for the ontology problem, well, what's the ontology? The ontology is the list of all the robotics problems that we have to solve and, and compare. At the beginning, it doesn't have to be very complete, so you can start with three problems, for example, and keep on adding or dividing, because within the same problem, there could be different solutions. Grasping algorithms for wheel robots with a gripper. Grasping algorithms for a wheel robot with a hand. So those, those will be different items in the ontology of problems. For each one of those different problems of the ontology, you have to define the interface that has to be done in ROS, of course. And the interface defines the sensors and actuators that you have to use for that problem. The way you have to calculate the score, so the way that you are going to say, OK, this is, uh, this is very good, this is not so good, et cetera, et cetera. And Everything has to be defined in ROS terms. Also, for each one of the problems, you have to define which robots apply to that particular problem of the ontology. And which environments, the same thing. Once you have all this defined, then you need to, de to create a platform. This platform, in order to be able to be used by anyone here, from different backgrounds, from different places, with different computers, with different uh, uh, access to, to the community. So it has to be independent of the operating system, has to provide the exact same conditions to all of the experiments, all the people that is sending their algorithms to be scored. It has to be automatic. So you send your algorithm and you don't care about anything else. The system will score and say where in the table of uh, of algorithms, your algorithm is located. It must allow, of course, the modification of the ontology in order to include new problems or divide old ones. And it has to compute the score automatically and show the benchmark. We have started at the construct developing this uh, platform. And it's a platform that is called the construct sim that is already online and you can visit there. Basically, we use this for simulating robots uh, in, on the web, like Ian said previously. So, um, yeah, this is an example. This is an example of an Atlas robot uh, being simulated in the construct, walking around. And this is live, so you can go to the construct team and start simulating your robots with Gazebo or Webots or DRC simulator. This is already working. Just log in there and start simulating. So this web platform handles the following things. First, it provides the same conditions for all the algorithms. So because this web platform is loading every time the same simulation with the same conditions, everybody is accessing the same conditions for the algorithm to be scored. Second, this platform also allows to test in the same conditions that they will be used for the scoring. So you can go to the platform and load 
the environment for robot for your experiment that will be used the same environment for the scoring. So you can do there your test, improve your algorithm, see how the algorithm is doing, and when you are happy, you press a button and then it will be selected on the next build during the night for scoring. Uh, yeah, so that's the step. Mark the algorithm for scoring when you are happy with your result. And then there is an automatic benchmarking process that is executed every night that takes your algorithm, put it into the simulation environment with a simulated robot, run the algorithm in order to calculate the score, and then produces the result for you. And this result is displayed on a leaderboard. I will show you later. At present, we have started developing all this. The platform is there, but for the ontology, we only have two examples so far that we have created in the form of contest. The first one is the now race, and the second one is the sumo contest that we call like that. The first one, the now race, is um, a testing environment where the user should start this. Okay, there is a video here. Okay, ah, yeah, here it goes. So it's shown there, okay, it's not shown here on my screen, sorry. Uh, so the, the now race, you have your now, ra your now robot that has to walk 10 meters as fast as possible. Um, the robot available is only one now, so we are not doing with other robots. And the environment available is only one, this uh, race track. The interface that your algorithms can access are the full body joints, the camera, and the EMU, IMU sensor. The same for the, we have created the same for the sumo contest. In the sumo contest, you have those two Darwin robots that must fight. Yeah, the walking algorithm was not very good. So, yeah, but it will keep on, so they're clever. Uh, so you had to take a humanoid and take, a bo uh, take out of the ring an intruder. The robot is a Darwin, and the environment is a sumo ring. The interface is, again, the full body joints, the camera, and the IMU sensor. So if you can create your algorithm, put it in our system, and... <laughs> yeah, they're having fun. So, and then the system will... will execute your algorithm during the night and put it here into the leaderboard. So this is the leaderboard that is being executed every night and that contains the scores of every one of the different algorithms per each day and how they escalate depending on the modifications that you are doing. The same, we have done the same with the now. I cannot... I cannot see the video here, so I cannot move it forward. But, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to move forward myself. But there is the same uh, type of leaderboard for the other uh, example of the now race. Now it looks like, yeah. Well, this is, in this video, uh, this part, you see the general board for all the contests that we have. In this case, will be the, all the problems of the ontology that we have. So you can access to any of those and select uh, to, in order to see the status of uh, the different algorithms for a given problem. This is for the now race. And also we contain how it changes on the time, who is winning, and who is taking the leader position, etc. <clears throat> what is interesting about the platform is that the users have the training environment in the platform. So you don't have to set up something in your computers locally and then afterwards pray that it will work in the same way in the, in the scoring system, in the benchmarking system. You go to the same system, execute the same things for training and then once you're happy, press a button and then it's submitted for scoring during the night. And everything is the same. We have integrated those two problems, but we are looking for other problems to integrate. So if you have any suggestion, please come and talk to us in order to include your problem 
of benchmarking into our platform. As a conclusion, I would like to state this idea that uh, every time that a new algorithm or robot model or environment is introduced into the system, a new score and classification for all the previous scores that we have calculated can be recalculated again. So as I said, if we modify the movie libraries, maybe your algorithms will not have the same score, but it doesn't matter because our system will recalculate all of them again and generate the new classification. You don't have to do anything. This is done automatically. And uh, so you only get a new distribution of the scores based on the current execution of the algorithms. We call this thing a kind of continuous benchmarking. And just to end my presentation, I would like to say that we are looking for investors in order to develop this project further away. So if you know anyone, maybe your neighbor or somebody, you can <laughs> make a reference to us. Thank you very much. So, um, as we saw yesterday, Gazebo supports multiple physics engines. Yes. And a common complaint is that uh, the output of uh, some of these physics engines is not deterministic. Uh, so there's an element of randomness to the results of benchmarks that you get. Uh, do you have a framework for dealing with this, these statistical variations? No. The way of dealing with this, I would say that is uh, to generate the same test the same exact test, um, different times, and then do this kind of average. This is the method that is used in evolutionary robotics, for example, because we have this problem in, revolution in evolutionary robotics, and what is done is, is just average everything. Uh, you do the experiment 100 times with the same robot, same environment, and then you get that score there. I, I would suggest that. Okay. Um, hi, I actually have two quick questions. So first one is, uh, what's the major difference between this and OpenAI? OpenAI? Yeah. Okay, I don't know very much about OpenAI, but if I understood correctly, is uh, uh, OpenAI, they don't use robots. They are using games. Is it like that? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, they are using games. And actually, we wanted to contact them in order to use our system for them in, and then apply their deep learning algorithms in our simulations so everything will be connected. Right, okay, so uh, whether or not it's a game or it's like a robot platform, it's actually uh, the, the, the key element there is uh, how good you can simulate the world, right? So uh, for example, in the grasp challenge or the grasp task, um, there are no existing like very good physical engine for let's say tactile based feedback kind of control. And uh, if without that, then any sort of uh, grasp, grasp algorithm, even if they work in the simulation, it would not work in the in real world. So like if there's that gap, then what's the point of the whole thing? Oh, yes. Uh this is one of the problems in uh, using simulations. There are many others okay, that we have already identified. There are some uh, things in real time that we cannot provide. So you cannot test any algorithms in real time. There are some very low level control algorithms that we can neither uh, include into our benchmarking. We are proposing a first step because there is nothing about uh, benchmarking in robotics apart from data sets very fixed for very specific problems. So we are opening the, the, the window in, into a, a new step for benchmarking, and maybe later when we have that level, we can attack those kind of problems. Now we, we don't know how to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.